This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Thank you for your power. Thank you for signs and wonders. Amen. Glory be to God. You're welcome to this master class in ministry. And we're looking at miracles, signs, and wonder. And this is a part three. Today we're going to look at Jesus, a man of miracles, signs, and wonder. That is a subtopic in this class, in this course we're doing miracle signs and wonder ministry. And today we're going to look at Jesus, a man of miracles, signs, and wonder. I like us to look at Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourself also know. Miracles, signs, and wonder was natural in the ministry of Jesus. It was natural. It just flowed. It happened because Jesus yielded himself to the Father. The supernatural can become natural to you. The supernatural can become natural to you, that you consistently see the move of God, manifestations of the Spirit in your everyday walk. And that is why we have Christ in us. One of the purpose of Christ in you is for you to have an expression of the miraculous. I said one of the purpose of Christ in you is for you to have the expression of the miraculous. And that is why it's important that we have the revelation of the indwelling Christ. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. He's the anointed one. When the anointed one dwells in a person, he constantly produces anointing in the person. The anointing to minister, but it's not everyone in the body of Christ have a revelation of the indwelling Christ. And because Christ dwells in you, the headquarter of power resides in you. All the power you need to change lives, to transform destinies, to move nations, to impact people is already inside you. All the power you need, all the power that you need to make a difference in this life is already inside of you. But the manifestation of this power will come by revelation, knowledge, and understanding. The manifestation of the power that is in you will come by the application of revelation knowledge and the understanding you have. And that is why it's important that we have spiritual understanding to help us deploy what we already have. The power of God is inside you. The power of God is inside you. You must learn to practice this consciousness. I am carrying the power of God. I am a mobile power. I am carrying the power of God. I am a vehicle full. I'm, I'm, I'm the vehicle of God with God's power. I'm carrying the power of God. I'm a channel for the expression of power. I am carrying the power of God. That kind of mentality has to be established in you. I am carrying the power of God. The power of God is in me, and the power of God is going to flow through me. You need to maintain that confession. The power of God is in me, and the power of God will flow through me. And that was why yesterday we look at Acts 10.38. 
uh, when the writer said, the spirit, uh, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because of an, he has anointed me. You know, Jesus, Paul, Luke was talking about Jesus, how God anointed him with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, but God was with him. We look at New Gospel chapter 4 from verse 17 to 19. And so how Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he have anointed me. Jesus was conscious of the anointing. And the same you have to do as a minister, you have to be conscious that you are anointed. You have to be conscious that you are anointed. I am carrying the power of God. That mentality is important. I am a carrier of the power. When I speak, I will release the power of God. When I speak, the power of God will go forth. This is the kind of mentality that exonerates you from fear, from limitation, and from oppression. I am carrying the power of God. I am a power carrier. I am carrying the power of God. This is the kind of mentality you should have. He said, men of Israel, hear this word, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs. By miracles. The ministry of Jesus was full of miracles, signs, and wonders. The ministry of Jesus was full of miracles. The ministry of Jesus was full of power. Amazing things were happening in this man's ministry. Miracles were happening. And why did the miracles happen? He acknowledged that he was anointed. He acknowledged that he was anointed. Why did Jesus some more miracles, more signs and wonder? He acknowledged that he, he was anointed. The more he had the knowledge of that anointing that is in his life, the more he had manifestation of miracles, signs, and wonders. He was walking in the knowing of the power. And it's so important for you as a minister, if you're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders, you need to be conscious of this fact that I am carrying the power of God. As I minister today, the power of God will break yokes in this place. As I minister today, there will be a release of the power of God. And that was the kind of mentality that Jesus had. That was the kind of mentality he had. And wherever he shows up, things happen. Wherever he goes, things happen. Why was it happening for Jesus? He was conscious of the anointing and he protected that anointing. It is your responsibility to protect the anointing in your life. It is your responsibility to protect the anointing on your life. You are anointed. You are anointed. You are carrying the power of God. The more you have the revelation of the power in you, the more you're going to have the expression of the power. If I have more revelation about the power of God in me, I will have the expression of the power. So you can have the expression of the power without having the revelation of the power. What would the revelation of the power do for you? It will produce the conviction for releasing the power. When you have the revelation of the power of God in you, it will produce the conviction for releasing the power. But if you, if you don't have consciousness that you are carrying the power of God, and how did you come into this power? Christ in you. If you are born again, you have Christ in you. If you are born again, someone said, but I need to know that if that is really true, I want some scriptures to verify that for me. I want some scriptures to show me that I'm carrying the power of God in me. And I can to look at this, watch this. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. It said, but to those who are called, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, but to those who are called, both the Jews and the Greek, Christ, the power of God. Christ, the power of God. Christ is the power of God to those who are called. And now you are born again. Now you are born again. You have Christ in you. Simply means you have power in you. You have power in you. A lot of Christians 
have not come to believe that the power of God is already in them. Some are believing that one day they will have the power. Some are believing when I fast, I will get the power. It is not fasting that brings the power of God. What fasting does is to help us to be sensitive in releasing the power. It is not fasting that brings the power of God. It's not fasting that brings the power of God. It's not fasting. It is the Christ in you that is the power. The Christ in you, the source of power, the source of healing, the source of miracles, signs, and wonder. But most of us are yet to come to this knowledge that the power is in us. So we're thinking if I fast, it's good to fast and pray. Very, very important. Don't, don't, don't take that for granted. It's good to fast and pray, but it's not fasting and prayer that brings the power. The day Christ came into your life, the power of God came into your life. And that is why you have the Spirit of God in you. And fasting would do is to subject the flesh. What prayer and fasting will do is to subject the flesh. Prayer and fasting will subject the flesh as you can be able to release the power that is in you. When we fast and pray, will bring our emotion under control. When we fast and pray, it helps us to become sensitive towards God. Uh, one of the things I didn't teach about sensitivity, maybe, maybe we can go back later, maybe we can go back to it later on, we're going to talk about that. Uh, one of the keys to sensitivity is praying in the Spirit and fasting. Is praying in the Spirit and fasting. Uh, praying in the Spirit and fasting helps you to be more sensitive. When you fast and pray, it helps to increase your level of spiritual sensitivity. It helps you to make connection quickly. You know, you, you just know, you just heard, you know, you just saw. There is this quickening you receive. There is this experience you have by the help of the Holy Ghost. Your, your spirit is quickened to respond to, to the Word of God. Your spirit is quickened to respond to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So when we fast and pray, we are creating an atmosphere where we can easily release the power. There is this quickening that comes to us when we fast and pray. And there is a boldness that comes to fasting and prayer. There is a boldness that proceeds from a place of fasting and prayer. That boldness is as a result of uh, been spending some time praying, and there is how you feel. Yes, when you spend time to fast and pray, there is a feeling you have. Yes, I'm telling you, there's a kind, that is how you feel. Now, that feeling helps you to discharge what you're carrying, to discharge, to release the power of God that is in you. So when we fast and pray, we are cultivating the atmosphere for the manifestation of the miraculous. We are cultivating the atmosphere for the manifestation of the miraculous when we fast and pray. So here we saw, uh, in First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty four, but to those who are called, but to those who are called, both the Jews and the Greek, Christ the power of God, Christ the power of God. To those who are called, to those who are called, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. So Christ is the power of God, and Christ is the wisdom of God. That simply means if I feed on the revelation of the indwelling Christ, I'll be able to manifest the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God concerning situation, to know what to do about the situation, what to do about the circumstances. The more I have the revelation of the indwelling Christ in me, I will work more in power, I will work more in wisdom. And these are the key two factors that makes a huge difference. The power of God and the wisdom of God. Now the faith factor comes from us. We supply the faith. We supply the faith for the release of the wisdom of God, for the release of the power of God. We supply the faith. You know, Romans 10, 17 said, so then faith connects by hearing. How does faith come? It comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17. 
So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I'm listening to God's word, one of the key things that is coming to me is that faith begins to rise in my heart. Faith begins to rise in my heart. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God's word contains the liberating energy. God's word contains the liberating energy. So when I hear the word of God, when the word of God, uh, I embrace the word of God, I'm embracing the energy of the spirit. When I embrace God's word, I'm embracing the energy of the spirit. So here he said, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So Jesus, a man of miracles, signs and wonder. Jesus also walked by faith. Jesus was a faith warrior. He was a man of faith. Jesus was a man of faith. Jesus was a man of faith. When Jesus lived in this atrium, he lived by faith. He lived by faith. And faith is a major ingredient of the miraculous. I want to say this again. I said faith is a major ingredients of the miraculous. Faith is a major factor when it comes to walking in the miraculous. He said, he that cometh to God must believe. One of the key things you have to do when you come to God, you must believe. You have to be in faith to say the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. But cause he has anointed me. You have to be in faith to have that declaration. You can have that kind of declaration except you're walking by faith. You can't have that kind of declaration that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, that he has anointed me. It takes some level of boldness to keep that kind of conversation or confession before people. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So here we saw that wisdom and power is Christ. If you have Christ in you, you have the power of God, you have the wisdom of God, and you can manifest it in any given situation. When you don't know what to do, the Spirit will show you how to do it. I want to say that again. I said, when you don't know what to do, the Spirit of God will show you how to do it. When you don't know what to do, the Spirit will show you how to do it. And that is why we walk by faith. Jesus was a man of faith. Now, I want to show some manifestations that took place in the ministry of Jesus. Let's take, for instance, John Gospel, chapter 2. Let's look at the first miracle of Jesus. In John Gospel, chapter 2, I read verse 1. He said, on the third day there was a, a wedding in King of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. The mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Now, Mary started a conversation. And if you're going to see manifestation of the miraculous, you need to start a faith conversation. What do I mean by that? You need to begin to declare what you want to see. You need to start declaring what you want to see. What do I want to see? In 2 Corinthians 4.13, in 2 Corinthians 4.13, he showed us how the spirit of faith works. We believe, therefore have we spoken. So the spirit of faith works on this wise. You believe it in your heart, and then you make the declaration. You believe it, then you declare. So Jesus said, my hour has not come. But Mary has an expectation. Like we taught in our first class, that one of the keys to the miraculous is to have an expectation. Expectation is important if you're going to have the expression of the miraculous, expectation, expectation. What are you expecting? 
What are you expecting? Expectation will help you to release the energy of your faith. Expectation will help you to release the energy of your faith. One of the ways we release the energy of our faith is when we have expectation. You step into that meeting, have an expectation. You, you are praying for someone, have an expectation that they will be healed when you pray. Expectation is important to make your declaration to be effective. If I have no expectation, my declaration will be weak. Expectation empowers my declaration. Expectation empowers my declaration. I cannot truly have an effective declaration with poor expectation. So my expectation should be based on a conviction of the promises of God. My expectation should be based on the conviction of the promises of God. My expectation should be based on the conviction of the promises of God. Where is the, your expectation coming from? Is the knowledge of the promises of God, what Christ has done for us, what he has done for us should be the basis for your expectation, should be the basis for your faith declaration, should also be the basis for your confection. Hallelujah. So he said here, and Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. Now, there are situations that could lead to offense. You know, there are people that will hear Jesus say this and they get offended at him. Why will he tell me that? I came to him to ask for miracle, to ask for help. He just told me, so I have not come. That is why I don't like these preachers. You know, start talking. Offense can hinder the flow of the anointing. Offense can resist the manifestation of the miraculous. And that is why walking in offense can hinder you from expressing the anointing in its full capacity. And that's what the enemy wants to do, that you get offended and not focus on the will of God. That is why walking in love is setting the stage for the flow of the Spirit. Walking in love is setting the stage for the flow of the Spirit. Walking in love is setting the stage for the flow of the Spirit. Walking in love is setting the stage for the flow of the Spirit. If you want to have the flow of the Spirit in your meetings, in your services, in the things God has called you to do, your love work must be intact. Why? Ministry is an atmosphere where people can easily pick offense. Ministry is an atmosphere where people can easily pick offense, get bitter, quarrel, keep malice. And that is why the enemy wants that to happen, because in offense, it will be difficult for your faith to be affected. Faith working by love. One of the ways your faith is going to work is because you're maintaining your love work. People will do things to you that will make you become bitter, become offended. Watch out. Be quick to forgive. Be fast to believe. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. Man, I forgive you. I don't, I don't got grudges against you. I forgive you. The reason why you need to forgive is to keep the atmosphere where the anointing can flow. That's the reason why you need to forgive, to keep the atmosphere where the anointing can flow. You want the anointing to flow. You keep the atmosphere of love and faith. Love, faith, and hope. Love, faith, and hope are the pillars of the miraculous. Love, faith, and hope, that, that atmosphere needs to be there for you to have manifestations, visitations of the Spirit. That atmosphere has to be there. If you don't have the atmosphere of faith, love, and hope, you won't have much manifestation. There'll be a struggle. You won't be able to pull it out because it's already in you. And as you walk in love, the Bible said that Jesus was moved with compassion. And compassion is an expression of love. Compassion is an expression of love. Compassion has its roots 
in the love of God. And that is one of the things we're going to study in this course about miracle signs and wonder. We're going to study the nature of the love of God, which is the, the, the moving force that helps you minister to people. Because if you don't truly love people, you can't minister to them. It takes the love work for you to reach out to the anointing upon your life and minister to people. And that is why walking in love will help you to reach more people than walking in strife, than walking in jealousy, than walking in envy, than walking in any other thing. So walking in love is important. The love root is the foundation for the faith work. The love root, yeah, has to be the, the love root. There has to be the love root. And that is the foundation for your faith work. The love root. You know, even in the natural, it's not everyone you can go and tell them your problem or whatever you're dealing with. There are people you can't tell, man, I have this challenge, I have this situation. No, there are people you can't tell that because they don't have your back. But there are people you can call them and say, hey, look at what I'm going through. Or look at my situation. Or look at this. There's not everybody you can talk to. You can pray for everybody. You can love on everybody. But it's not everybody you can tell what you're dealing with. Because it's not everybody that have the capacity to handle that. Some people will tell them what your challenge is. You see it on Facebook. You see it on Twitter. You see it everywhere. So you have to keep, shut, you have to keep your mouth shut. You have to know who God is leading you to talk to about your life. You can't talk to your life with everybody. But you can preach the gospel to everybody. You can preach the gospel to everybody. But you can't talk about your life with everybody. This is just a counsel I'm giving you as a minister. It's all your problems can be on Facebook. You can't put your problems on Facebook. You can't put your situation on Facebook. If you want to talk about your pain, your crisis, your marriage situation, you look for somebody that is accountable, somebody you trust the integrity, somebody that you know they have your back, they genuinely love you and talk with them. Why? Because they can pray for you. They can stand with you. They believe that you're a human being. You have challenges. You have situations. They can comfort you and encourage you to rise above that limitation. But it's not everyone you saw in church that you can tell your pains. Why? If you do that, you may end up hurting yourself. Glory be to God. So now we saw that Mary came to Jesus and said they have no wine. She expected Jesus to respond, but the response she got was not the response she expected. But what she did was not to allow the response of Jesus to abort her faith expectation. Mary refused to allow the response of Jesus to abort her expectation. She never allowed the response of Jesus to abort her expectation because Jesus said his time has not come. So naturally what she could have done was to just keep quiet and walk away. But not Mary. When you are in faith, you are on the move. When you are in faith, you are on motion. <laughs> You're moving. You know, You're because your faith, faith does not relax. Faith is on the move until the harvest comes in. Faith does not relax. Faith is on a move until the harvest comes in. So Mary quickly went to the people and said to them, whatsoever he said to you, do it. That was the instruction. Whatsoever he said to you, do it. Because when you are in faith, you will keep a confection that is full of hope. When you are in faith, you will keep a confection that is full of hope. And a few minutes later, we saw Jesus telling them to fill the water pot. Miracles happen when you fail to give up. When you fail to give up, you refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. You refuse to give up. I'm, I'm not going to give up on my expectation just because I didn't have it the first time. And the same to you when you pray for someone and you didn't see quick manifestation, don't say God did not hear the prayer. Don't let doubts steal your expectation because that will happen. Don't let unbelief steal your expectation. Don't let doubt steal your expectation and don't let unbelief steal your expectation. Because what the enemy wants to do is to make unbelief steal your expectation. 
Because when you are in doubt, you are not in faith. And that is a compromise. Doubt is that you have compromised what you expected not to compromise. You are in a place of compromise right now because you're doubting. You are doubting the integrity of the word of God, what the word of God has said concerning this situation, concerning this issue. You doubted the word. No, you don't have to doubt the word. You have to believe the word. You have to believe the word. You have to act on that word. And you know, the Bible says that just shall live by faith. How is the church going to live? They will live by faith. And faith in God can bring supernatural results. Faith in God can bring supernatural results. Jesus, a man of miracles, signs and wonder. And why did Jesus become a man of miracles, signs and wonder? He knows how to yield himself to the Holy Ghost. He knows how to respond to the flow of the Spirit. Responding to the flow of the Spirit was a major part of Jesus' life. He knows how to respond to the flow of the Spirit. He knows how to respond to the flow of the Spirit. And this is one of the keys to the miraculous, responding to the flow of the Spirit. That's why we pray in tongues. That's why we read our Bibles. We meditate on scriptures to be able to have the flow of the Spirit. You pray in tongues. You read the scriptures. You meditate on God's word. For what purpose? As you can follow the flow of the Spirit. You cannot truly follow the flow of the Spirit if you are not renewing your mind with God's word. If you are not praying in tongues, you will soon be tired. Ministry is a journey. Ministry, like I told you a few days back, like, like a marathon race. It's like a marathon. Some people are getting tired right now. They can't continue anymore. They're tired. Maybe they started a church and there were challenges. There were crises and they closed down the church. They started a ministry with outreach. And it wasn't prospered. Now, let me say this to you. The things of God does not prosper overnight. Let me teach you this. The things of God does not prosper overnight. The things of God goes through process before prospering. God does not just prosper people. God doesn't just prosper people. For everybody God prospered, watch the scripture. There was a process to their prosperity. There was a process to their progress. God does not just prosper. He, he, he watches your loyalty. He watches your consistency. God watches your diligence. He watches what you do with the money he gives to you. He watches what is your ultimate desire. You know, God watches you. You, you. you can be smart on people, but not at God. You can fake your life before anybody, but you can't fake it before God. God doesn't just prosper people. That may come like a shock to you, but that's true. And that is where a lot of people get frustrated, right? Because they think that they could just do one or two things and then they will stop prospering. There is a process to your prosperity. There is a process to your progress. There is a process to your journey of miracle signs and wonders in ministry. And that is why when things are not happening, when you expected them to happen, it is not a time for you to give up, quit and walk away. I've been doing this for many years and it's not working. Man, let me tell you this. I've shared this with some of my friends here. They know it. God gave me a word about a particular place that a local church is using right now for church. In short, he gave the word to my wife and said, this place will be sold to us for the work of the ministry. Did you know we're in that property for over 11 years? We don't have a restroom there. The people refuse us to build anything like that would be for convenience, that it was a stressful moment. But God said he would give us a place. But the place looked like a place where we're having more challenges, more crisis, more issue. But God said he would give us a place. It took 11 years for the word of God to come to pass. It took 11 years. There are certain things God will tell you, it is not for today. 
but he has told you for you to keep your hope alive and stay in faith and keep your confection going. So just that you did not see results after one year, after five years of doing ministry, after six years of doing ministry, maybe things are not working. You just gave up and said, I'm not going to do this. I don't have anybody to help me. That's not how you do ministry. You stay with it. You stay committed to it. You continue to believe God for wisdom. You continue to believe God for his favor with people, with seasons, with timing, until you come to a place of manifestation. You cannot just say, oh, five years has passed. I've not seen anything. Ten years has passed. This year will be the 22nd year of my pastorate. The 22nd year of my pastorate. The 22nd years of pastoring. This year will be the 22 years. There are things God told me he would do. I haven't seen some. Some I have seen. I'm still in faith, believing him to see everything he told me. You can't just judge your life just because things are not moving according to your expectation. Then you start judging your life and say, this is not working out. That is not, that's not how faith works. Those who are in faith will maintain their joy. Those who are in faith, they will maintain their joy. One of the source signs to show that you're walking in faith is that you maintain your joy. You are not so bitter, people angry. All these people are the same. People are not helping me. Nobody's encouraging me. Let me say this to you. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. David encouraged himself. He encouraged himself. You must get to a point where you encourage yourself. You speak to yourself. You tell yourself, I can do this. You cannot just break or give up or quit every time pressure comes, challenges come. Those things are part of life and ministry. People will talk about you. People will gossip you. People will criticize you. People will pick on you. But your focus is not what is happening. Your focus is what God has asked you to do and keep your focus in the direction of his word. And that is how you prosper in ministry. Great ministries don't happen overnight. Great ministries don't happen overnight. And now I know that there are a lot of people who are getting involved in witchcraft to make their churches grow, to make their ministries grow. They come with all kinds of demonic manipulation. That is not the way of the spirit. You can go that way. Be patient with the five people that God gives to you until he adds the next. Be patient. Work on the people. Work on the process. Don't be in a hurry to abandon the vision, to look for option because you're facing resistance. Resistance are not an indication of God's withdrawal. I said resistance is not an indication of God's withdrawal. Resistance sometimes may be an indication of a new direction. Maybe God is trying to say something. Maybe there is something you haven't gotten right. Maybe there is something God wants you to handle at this level of ministry and life, but you have not been able to handle it. He wants you to get the picture clear. There are things God wants to do through you, but there is a process for those things to happen. Great ministries don't happen overnight. Great churches don't happen overnight. Great internet and ministry don't happen overnight. The world cannot know you overnight. People cannot know you overnight. There is a process. There is a process. There is a maturity process. And so many people are getting frustrated because they are not seeing a quick result. They are getting frustrated. And they're losing their focus. They're losing their passion. They're, they're losing the, the dream that God has called them to pursue. They're losing their focus. Why? Because of the, the pressure. Man, I've seen some pressure in ministry. I've seen betrayal. Oh, you don't want to hear my story. I've seen people, you did everything for them. Oh, you clothed them. You gave them food. You gave them money. You supported them. You stood with them when their marriage is in trouble. And right now, everything was okay. They walk away. Those are the things that can make you become bitter. And then you can't see the miraculous. 
How people treat you may not be according to your expectation, but don't lose the expectation of your purpose. That should be your priority. How people treat you. So if I look at how people treated me, I can't have this master class running here because I don't need to care. But that's not my focus. My focus is to serve the body of Christ. My focus is to do the will of God. Whether you recognize me or you don't recognize me, that's not my business. My business is to do the will of God. A lot of us are seeking for recognition until we hurt our purpose. We're seeking for recognition. Nobody recognizes me. Nobody recognizes me. You seek for recognition until you miss God. Your purpose is not to seek for recognition. Your purpose is to focus on the will of God and make it your priority. That is how to live your life. You can't be seeking for recognition, seeking for fame, seeking for people to introduce you. That's not the focus. If you're doing what God asks you to do, God will open the doors for you to do the things he wants you to do. He will open more doors. He will give you more platform. Don't be self-seeking. Don't be a kind of person that you want it your way because sometimes it won't go your way. And if things does not go your way, doesn't mean you have to start blowing up things. You have to start scattering things and start fighting people. No. Jesus was a man of miracles, signs, and wonder. There are many things that could have made him to quit the ministry, to give up the vision. Do you know what it means to preach? And a lot of people left your ministry. People left Jesus. People left Jesus. If people walk away from you, you are not the first person. If people abandon you, you are not the first person. Don't make it look like a big deal that people left your ministry. People left your life. There is no church on planet Earth that people have not left. There is no man of God that people have not left. There is no woman of God. It is just part of ministry and life. Some people will come, they will stay with you. Others will come, they will stay with you. Don't make it an issue. Don't let it or get you offended. To a point, you have to abandon your calling because you felt like those people are supposed to be with me. No, don't pick offense. Don't pick offense. Watch out against offense. Watch out against offense because it stopped the flow of the miraculous. Watch out. Watch out. Jesus, a man of miracle, because he was a love man. It was a man who understand the, the, the love of God and how it works. And he stayed with it. You need to learn to stay. Uh, you know, God is just talking to someone right now. You need to learn how to stay with what God asks you to do and keep doing it even when no one appreciates you. Stop looking for appreciation. If you're looking for appreciation and people don't appreciate you, it just makes you stop doing what you're supposed to do. Don't look for appreciation. Focus on purpose. Don't look for appreciation. Focus on purpose. If you don't focus on purpose, looking for appreciation can be a distraction. There are people that will intentionally ignore you. They know you're doing what is right, but they just ignore you. This is a counsel for someone about ministry. They ignore you. Your job is not to look for the appreciation. There are people that may come into your ministry, they spite you, they don't believe in you. They spite you, they saw a matter of things behind your back, all kinds of things they say about you. So you shouldn't let those kind of things distract you from what God has called you to do. Those things will happen. If, I'm, if I sit here and tell you that nobody will criticize, nobody will talk about you, I'm lying to you. But in the midst of those things, remember you're sent to work miracles. You're sent to pray for the sick. You're sent to minister the healing power of God. And from the love dimension, you will minister. From the love dimension, you will minister. How are you going to minister? You're going to minister from the love of God. From the love of God, you will minister to people. You will minister to men and women. But you can't do that in the place of bitterness and offense. Why? It hinders the flow of the anointing. It hinders the flow. The boldness will come in the place of faith, love, and hope. And the Spirit of God begins to use you to touch the lives of people, to minister direction to people, to give insight to people. Why? Because your mind has been transformed. In John 15, like 3, St. John 15, like 3, said, Ye are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. So you take the word of God and make it your meditation. And that is how you reign 
in life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all I can take for this class today. We're going to be back again tomorrow to continue uh, Miracle Signs and Wonder in ministry. Uh, that will be part three. So I want you to invite someone. Oh, that will be part four, sorry. Uh, I'd like you to invite someone and tell them to be here tomorrow and keep sharing the broadcast. We are touching lives. I believe that someone is getting better with these classes. Someone is learning something new. Someone is receiving insight, receiving revelation. So I want to encourage you to be part of this class tomorrow. And also want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, A Straight Man Teachings on YouTube. And also you can get our books by going to Amazon.com. There is greatness in you. And for the things you need to know about your future, it's available on Amazon.com. And I also want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. Your partnership will support us to reach out to more and more people around the world. You can do your partnership by going to finishwebtv.com and slash giving. Or you can go to PayPal, and teaching at gmail.com. Thank you for being part of this class. Until I see you tomorrow morning, don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon. Love you.